forward button. Great. Okay. Uh, great. Let's get going. Uh, equipment you're going to need today is the usual a letter ball of some sort or a ball shaped object. Remember, preferably something interesting for your eyes to look at. Uh, and then two pencils, two cooking utensils. Uh, you could use your thumbs if that's easier, but something, something easy for you to hold. And then remember, as we get into some of the visual and vestibular work in this class, to take it slow and easy. Um, if you start to feel dizzy, nauseous, tired eyes, sleepy eyes, red eyes, anything like that, remember that is all okay and normal, but it means that you've met your edge and we don't want to go too far past that edge. Um, so back off, take a break. And you can always close your eyes and grab some water just to help the body reset. Alrighty, I think that's it. Let's get going. Make sure. Let's help that up a little bit. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So let's start. Let's just do a few shoulder circle rolls. We'll be going back and forth just to help settle into the body. Okay. Good. And then we'll still the body. We'll close the eyes. And we're going to focus on your three axes today. We were doing this maybe a month or so ago. And we're going to start with your vertical axes. So whether you're seated or standing, I just want you thinking about that center line through your body going from the ground up to the sky. So it's that same axis that you rotate around. That's the part of your body that helps you sit or stand tall while still staying connected or grounded either into the floor, or into your chair. So just see if you can come into that axis a little bit more. How does that vertical axis feel for you today? All the way from your sit bones up your spine and up and out through the top of your head. And then starting to bring your focus into your side axes. So that left to right um, reaching distance of you. So just starting to notice and compare maybe the two halves of your body. How does the left versus the right feel today? through the shoulders, through the hips, the ribs, the legs, and the feet. And maybe you even notice that one side is harder to sense. Maybe you have more sensation or just more awareness of one side compared to the other. Um, so just trying to bring your awareness to that quiet side. And then lastly, thinking of that axis from the front to the back of you. So let's find that same comparison. Do you find that there are parts of the front or parts of the back of your body that you have more sensation or more awareness of? For most people, it's kind of hard for them to feel certain parts of their back, maybe certain parts of the backs of their leg or their hips. So just bringing your attention to the quieter areas in that front versus back axis. Good, we'll take one more inhale here. One more exhale and we'll open the eyes. All right, let's take the fingertips. We'll come to that area just under the collarbone. So we'll just start with that gentle tapping under that area. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then let's add a hum with that also. So taking an inhale, hmm, going all the way to the end of your breath. Hmm, and maybe just doing that a couple times through. Hmm.
Good. And then we're going to come to the belly. So both hands on the belly. And no rules today, just giving the belly a rub. Go in any direction you want. You can go side to side or up down. And just noticing where those tender parts are. Like I always say, when you get to a tender part, maybe holding and then trying to put your breath into that area. This is where we store a lot of our fear, our anger, our disgust, our hesitancy in the organs and the stomach and the intestines. We can get a lot of not just physical stickiness, but emotional stickiness here. Um, yeah, so it's nice to just an, another plus for doing a belly rub. Definitely have some sticky spots in there. Okay, good. And then let's shake the hands. Let's let the breath and the lips go. Yeah, do that one more time. Okay, good. And I just want you to keep shaking. We're going to do a longer shake today. And you can do a back and forth shake from shoulder to shoulder, your arms. If you're standing, you can shake the heads. But we're just going to keep that shaking going. And then I'm going to have you blow up your cheeks so you've got a lot of air in your cheeks. Don't necessarily hold your breath, though. Just hold the air in your cheeks. Mm -hmm. So you're still breathing through your nose as you do that. And then I want you to move that air pocket around your mouth from the left cheek to the right cheek back and forth. Mm -hmm. Coordination might be hard. Switch directions. Keep shaking. <laughs> okay, good and relax. Awesome. <laughs> okay, we'll take finger head, uh, fingertips to the scalp. Give the hair and the scalp a nice rub all over. And then I want you to set your fingertips on your scalp and leave them in one place, but move your finger, move your hands around. So you're kind of massaging in one area. So it's your scalp that's moving, not necessarily your fingertips. Yep, and then move it to a different part, moving the scalp around and start to notice where your scalp has more freedom to move. Are there parts of your scalp that don't move quite as much as the other parts. And remember to do the very front. So the front of your, um, where your forehead meets your hairline. We sometimes hold a lot of tension in there. Yeah. And I'm gonna have you bring your hands to that area just under the bump of the back of your head. So the bump in the back of your skull, just under that area. And you're gonna feel two ridges on your left and your right side going down. And I just want you to take, you can use fists, you can use open hands, fingers, whatever you're doing. And I just want you to starting from that high point to drag your fingers down the back of your neck and all the way kind of out through the top of your neck. You can even finish at the top of your collarbones if you want. Yeah, we're just starting a little higher than we normally do. So from that bump behind your head, dragging your fingers along the ridges. It doesn't have to be too intense here. And then down and out, finishing at the top of the collarbones. And just do that drag a few times. Notice if there's a difference left to right side Maybe this doesn't feel sensitive for you at all, and that's great. Yeah, I'm gonna do one more here. Okay, good, and relax, okay. Okay, 
I'm going to bring in some tongue movements here. Um, this is going to help stimulate some of our cranial nerves. So, so um, see if you can stay with me. So lips are going to stay closed if you can. And you're going to poke your cheek into the left, your tongue into the left side of your cheek. And then into the right side of your cheek. Okay. I want you to do that as quick as you can. Poke the left, poke the right, poke left, poke right. But try to not let your lower jaw move around. So we want the lower jaw to stay steady. It might even help to put your fingertips on the lower jaw. Yeah, you can look at yourself in the zoom or in a mirror if you're in front of something. And you're just pushing your tongue back and forth, back and forth. Okay, I'm gonna layer on, you can take it or leave it. I want your eyes to dart with your tongue. So when your tongue pushes into the right side, uh, to the left side of your cheek, your eyes are gonna look at something on the left. And when the tongue pokes into the other side, your eyes will follow it. Mm -hmm. Going back and forth, back and forth. I'm just gonna watch people here. Yeah, it's hard to not allow the lower jaw to move. I see the lower jaw wiggling for some of you. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay if it wiggles at first, but just at least be aware of it. So having your hands there. Okay, good. And then relax. We're just gonna do one more. I want you to push your tongue into your upper lip mm -hmm, as hard as you can. And then push your tongue down under your lower lip. Mm -hmm. Upper lip, lower lip, upper lip, lower lip. Mm -hmm. And then can we bring the eyes with that as well? When tongue goes up, eyes go up and vice versa. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. That's good, everybody. Yes. Maybe just do a few more in each direction. Yeah, awesome. And then come back to the center. Good. Okay. Okay, good. Let's give let's give the eyes a little bit of a break here. We'll take hands up overhead. You can interlace the fingers if you're able to. Take a deep inhale into the base of the ribs and find an articulation all the way down. Good, pause at the bottom. Let's just take a couple of breaths here. If you found in the beginning of class that it was hard for you to sense the back of your body, I want you to think about breathing into the quiet part of your back. So if you were doing that body scan and you're like, hmm, it was kind of hard for me to sense the area between my shoulder blades, I want you to put your breath there. So each inhale, trying to breathe into those more quiet areas of your back. Just bringing your awareness there, your attention there. And on your next exhale, we'll roll ourselves back up. Good, we'll bring hands behind the head. Yeah, if that's kind of hard, we can keep hands crossed in front of the chest. We're just gonna come into a side bend to the left. And then I want you to take your head and I want you to push your head back into your hands. Okay, and then come up to the center and then side bend to the right. And again, just trying to push your head back into your hands. The reason I tell you to do that is because oftentimes the hands start to curl the head forward, but we just want to keep the chest and the neck and the head open and then center. Mm -hmm. Side bend left and side bend right. And just going back and forth a few more times there. Eyes stay forward, nose stays pointing forward. And last one. Okay, good. We're gonna take hands behind the back, interlace the fingers if you can, opening the chest up. Yep, and then give that a shake. Okay. Uh, let's find our body tapping. Pick an arm, any arm. Start by moving from the shoulder, working down the inside of the arm. 
out to the palm, and then up the outside of the arm. You can use whatever kind of a stroke or a tap or a karate chop that you want to use here. We'll just do a few times on each side. Switching over to the other side, down the inside, and then up the outside. Okay, when you've done that a few times, Let's just bring a little bit more attention to the joints. So we'll come to the wrists. And if you can grab your wrists, I'm using my middle finger and thumb, but you can use your knuckles if that's easier. And just twirling the hand around the wrist. And as you do that, can you open and close the fingers? So as you're twirling back and forth, opening and closing. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do that on the other side, opening and closing as you twist or as you rub the wrist. Yeah. And then just working our way out through the fingers. If you're able to grab each finger and give it a bottle cap twist, uh, maybe five or six twists back and forth and just working your way down for both hands. If that's kind of hard for you, you can also just give the fingers or the knuckles a rub. It also feels nice as you're doing this one to give a little bit of traction to your fingers if you can. So if you're able to grab your fingers and twist back and forth, as I'm doing that, I'm tractioning my finger away from my hand. So I'm basically just pulling my finger. You might even hear a couple of knuckle cracks in there but that traction can feel really nice. Good. Okay, coming to the elbow, we're just gonna do a similar thing that we did on the wrist. So rubbing right above the elbow, the pointy part of the elbow. And I'm just twisting back and forth a couple times. And then twisting just below the pointy part of the elbow. And then can you keep twisting all the way down your forearm. So twisting back and forth, back and forth. This is really good for folks that are on a computer or a phone for a lot of the day. And then we'll switch sides. Circling above the elbow. Circling below the elbow. And then working your way, oops, sorry, let me stay in the camera. And then working your way down that forearm and then back up the forearm. Okay, and then we'll shake the hands. Nice work, everyone. Okay, uh, we'll just let the hands go down by the side and just coming into this nice, free, easy rotation. And then starting to see if you can give your arm a tap to the opposite side of your low back. Using the back of your knuckles. And if you're standing, you can let your hips rotate with you. Yeah. And as you're doing this again, can you maybe put your breath into those quiet areas? So for a couple of these swings back and forth, just taking an inhale somewhere into, into the quiet areas of your back or the quiet areas of the front of your body and just directing your attention and your awareness there. Breath can be a powerful thing with attention and awareness, but it can also help with spinal mobility um, and flexibility through the trunk. Okay. Good, we'll quiet the arms down. 
coming to the legs. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and find our tap coming down the outside of the legs. If you've got your shoes and socks off, you can give your feet a rub and then working your way up the inside of the legs. And same thing, we're just gonna do that two more times through here. And then making sure you get the tops of the thighs, the bottoms of the thighs. And then give the knees a bit of love and a bit of a rub. And then give the thighs just a little shake, kind of a shake rub, like you're trying to wake them up. Okay, and relax. Awesome. Just take a moment here, just noticing if the body is feeling any different. Okay. Let's grab the letter ball. If you've been playing with me for, for a while, go ahead and just go right into, into the letter ball here. And I'm going to layer on similarly to how I did last week. Uh, if you're new, I'm just going to walk you through this again here. So holding that ball into your chest, you're going to pull it away from your body at any angle around your body that you want. You're going to say the first letter or number you see and then pull it back into your chest. Pull it away from your body at a different angle. Say the first letter or number you see, pull it back in. And you're just going to continue with that. Looking at the ball, saying the first letter number you see and pulling it back in and just moving quickly through that. And if you can, if you're able to play catch with yourself and you're doing the same thing, stopping the ball, saying the first letter number you see and moving on. You could bounce it against the floor or against a wall. Oops. Kind of trying to surprise yourself trying to make it hard for yourself in some way, maybe throwing it between your two hands, throwing it behind you and above you, maybe doing your throws quicker. How quickly can your eyes track it, depending on how fast you're moving? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm gonna lay I'm gonna layer on. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go. Let's go. Every time you see a number, um, I want to do uh, every time you see a number, you're gonna do make sure I'm just saying this right. Um, Oh my God, left left hand, everybody, left hand to right leg, left hand to right leg. So you're just gonna tap that hip or tap the top of the thigh. You can also just tap the ball to that side. And then every time you catch, that was letter. So letter is left hand to right side. Number is right hand to left hip, okay? So let me... <laughs> Let me make this a little bit easier for you. I, I'm having to mirror you, so my lefts and rights are always reversed. That's why it always takes me like a split second longer than it should. Okay, so if you catch a letter, tap the ball to your right leg. And if you catch a number, tap the ball to your left leg. Did I say that right? Do we have it? Don't make me repeat that. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so every time you catch it, you're just going to tap it to that side. So just bringing brain speed into this a little bit more. Mm 
Mm. Yeah, and remember the faster you try to go, the harder this gets. So the idea of this is to make a decision as quickly as you can. You see the letter or the number, you tap the right thigh, and then you immediately keep moving. So we're trying to get that brain to make really quick decisions. And then for your body to do the movement that correlates with those decisions. Yeah. Remember, I still want you catching that ball all the way around you. Maybe do five or so more throws. And when you're done, I'll have you relax. Okay, good. So let's hold on to the ball. We're gonna do similar, um, this is called the VOR cancellation that we did last week. So holding that ball out in front of you and you're just gonna start. So I want you to think of your, and we'll all do this one together. Um, your eyes and your nose are gonna stay directed and pointed at that ball. And you're just gonna start by moving that ball side to side around you. Your eyes stay focused on whatever the letter or number is that you're looking at. It's okay for the background behind you to be blurry and to move, it, it has to be. Yeah, you can switch hands if you want to as you move it, but just staying with that moving in a side to side stance. If you get dizzy or nauseous, either slow down, move in a slower range of motion, so don't move as far left to right, um, or take a, take a full break. Close your eyes and relax. Okay, good. Let's go right to the next one. Same exact thing, but now you're going up and down. Eyes and nose stay pointed at that ball as you move the ball up and down. And then on the other side, if you wanna make it harder, the faster you move the ball and the bigger range of movement you move the ball in, the harder it gets for your eyes to track. Yeah, so you can choose how easy or hard you want this to be. Make sure your eyes stay, eyes and, eyes stay on the ball. And for folks who are blind or visually impaired, nose will stay pointed at the ball the whole time. Yeah, okay, good, relax. Go ahead and go into the diagonals. Same thing. You can switch arms if you're able to, if that arm is getting tired. Yeah, nice, everybody. Don't worry, I'll give you a, a longer break after this with the eyes. And then go ahead and go into the other, other diagonal. Yeah, awesome. Okay, just do a few more there. That looks really good, everybody, nice. And then go ahead and relax. Okay, we can place that ball down. Mm -hmm. And then let's find our hula hooping. We'll just do a spinal mobility and some shoulder stuff to reset here. Uh, so I like to put my hands at the base of my ribs. You can either do that or hands can just be on the laps, on the, on the lap. And just finding that hula hooping of your ribs moving around your pelvis, whether you're seated or you're standing. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking of trying to keep your shoulders and your ribs parallel with the floor. Okay, so we're not tipping over. We're just gliding the rib cage around the pelvis. And then switch directions.
Yeah, one more here. And back to the center. Okay, good. We're going to take left arm up over the head. And I want you to really reach up like you're really trying to reach something on a top shelf. And simultaneously, I want you to take your right hand and reach it down towards the ground. And slowly, it's going to start to bring you into this side bend. But I want your left hand still reaching up, 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 and your right hand still reaching down, down, down. Yep, take a breath there. And then exhale, come back to the center, and we'll switch sides. Right hand reaches up, left hand reaches down, coming into a side bend, but keeping on opposition from fingertips to fingertips. Take an inhale and exhale center. Yeah, switching sides, reach in opposition, inhale and exhale center and switch. Reach in opposition, inhale, exhale, switch. Let's do one more each side. Reach, inhale, exhale, switch. Last one, reach, inhale, exhale. Back to the center. Okay, we're going to bring that into a rotation now. So I want you to reach left arm back behind you and right arm forward. Yeah. And just hold that for, for a second there. Imagine somebody was pulling your two hands away from each other, trying to expand your wingspan here. Can you make that wingspan a little bit longer? Take an inhale and exhale to center, and then going right into the other side. So rotating to your right, your right arm is behind you, your left arm is in front. Make that wingspan a little bit longer and then back to the center, good. We're gonna add some head movements into this one. So rotating to the left, expand your wingspan. Look from your left hand to your right hand. Left hand, right hand. So your head is gonna be like on a swivel, <clears throat> excuse me, going back and forth a few times and then come back to the center and switch, expand. And then look back and forth between the two thumbs, maybe four times, and then center and switch. Thumb to thumb, thumb to thumb, center and switch. Back and forth, back and forth, center and switch. We have two more, you're doing great. Try to keep shoulders unshrugged here so we don't create any excess tension. Last one. Good, and back to the center. Okay. Let's give the shoulders a couple rolls. And have you reach both arms down for the ground now. So really creating some traction downwards. You're just gonna find a head tilt to the left. And then a head tilt to the right. And then a head tilt down, tucking your chin into your throat. And then a head tilt up. Okay, great. Let's do one more thing with the spine here and then we'll keep moving. So I'm just gonna have you lower down, like you're giving your knees a really big hug, trying to bury your head in between your knees. And then expanding, sitting or standing upright, opening the arms like you're about to give someone a big hug. Yep, good, give the knees a hug. And then open for the hug. Mm -hmm. Hug the knees. And then open. Yeah, two more like that, hug. And open, nice easy breath. Last one, hug and open good okay just take the wrist you can make a fist if you're able to and circling the wrists around back and forth okay and then we'll shake the hands 
Okay, um, you can grab your ball again if you want, or you can grab your pencil if that's easier for you to hold. I'm gonna use my pencil. And I'm gonna stay in front of the camera here. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna be moving the head and the eyes in opposite directions. So this is uh, layering on from what we were just doing. So I want you to go, so holding that pencil out directly in front of you, and we'll, we'll all do this one together as well. You're gonna turn your head, uh, let me make sure I'm saying this right. You're gonna turn your head to the right and just for now, keep the pencil directly in front of you and then turn your head to the left. Turn your head. So you're only turning your head to the left and the right as far as you can where you can still keep your eyes on the tip of that pencil. And you're just going slow. We're not gonna do the full VOR here. I'm just warming you up. Okay, now coming back to the center, you're gonna turn your head uh, to the right and you're gonna bring that pencil with you. Okay, so I should probably hold it with my right. So my head is turned as much to the right as I can, holding that pencil. Now I'm gonna drag the pencil to the left. So my head is turning right, but my eyes are going left and then bring the pencil back to the center. Keep that head turning right, pull the pencil to the left again and center, but you're only pulling it as far left as you can, where you can still keep your eyes focused on the tip. Okay, and you're just going back and forth with that pencil side to side. And notice that it's, this almost feels slightly unnatural because your head is going one way while the pencil is going the other way. Okay, so rechecking, can you turn your head? Can you rotate your head a little bit more? Yeah, and then let's go right into the other direction. So rotating your head and your neck to the left, bring the pencil with you. So I'm holding the pencil with my left hand. And then I'm gonna pull that pencil to the right and then back to the center. Or sorry, by back to the center, I mean like back out to the left side of your body. Pull the pencil to your right and then back out. Pull the pencil right and back out. Keeping the head and the neck rotated Yeah, so it's basically your brain having to tell your body to rotate while your eyes go in the opposite direction. It's, um, it's, there's a coordination piece in here. It's partially um, working the VOR still because your eyes are having to track something, but we're doing it in a fully rotated position. So it just adds a challenge. Yeah, and then we'll come back to the center. Okay. We'll drop the pencil. Let's bring both arms up to the sky and just finding a few big circles coming up and around behind you. Inhale the arms up, exhale the arms down. Yeah. Good, one more here. Okay. Great, and then we're gonna uh, layer in a little bit of coordination. I'm gonna come back to some of this stuff. So I want you to start, I forget if we were doing this last week or the week before, but I want you to start one hand on top of the other hand. So knuckles to palm, yeah. So taking that, so bottom hand is gonna stay totally still. Top hand is gonna rotate back and forth. So I'm, Slapping knuckles to the bottom palm and then hand to the bottom palm. Knuckles, hand, knuckles, hand, knuckles, hand. Yeah. And then how fast can you go with that? Back and forth. Can you keep that rhythm? Okay. Just notice how easy or not easy is this for you. And then we're going to switch hands. Yeah, so other hand is now the bottom. That hand stays totally still holding the other hand and then uh, switching the hand back and forth. Knuckles, palm, knuckles, palm, knuckles, palm. 
noticing which side is hard, oh, which side is harder for you. Yeah, this is good for the forearm and the wrist also, but really we're just playing with your coordination and your speed of movement here, which can be really tricky in this area for a lot of people. Yeah, okay, and relax. Okay, good. Okay. So we're gonna take, uh, let's see, we're gonna take left hand and we're just gonna find a horizontal figure eight just out to the side of your body. Yeah, no rules with this one. You can make it look however you want it to look. Okay, we're just gonna find our tapping with our other hand. So we're gonna go, uh, let me make sure, so I want some cross body in here. Okay, so we've got your right hand and your right hand is gonna tap left hip, right shoulder, and then left shoulder. Okay, so again, the hand taps uh, left hip, right shoulder, left shoulder. Okay, hip, shoulder, shoulder, hip, shoulder, shoulder hip, shoulder, shoulder. And you're just trying to stay with that figure eight and that tapping pattern. <laughs> Notice with this tapping, we're now doing across the body, which actually makes it a little bit harder. The slower you go, the easier it will be. The faster you go, the harder it will be. Okay, pause. Go the other direction with your figure eight. Okay, so get that direction into your body. And then, yeah, and then we're just, let's just do the same tap, same tap. I was gonna make the tap harder, but I'm not going to. Okay, let me see how people are doing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Got some people going quick here. Wow. Okay, pause. Find the figure eight with the other arm, horizontal figure eight. Okay, I'm gonna switch the tapping pattern. We're gonna go, um, hang on, let me make sure I'm getting crossbody. Okay, we're gonna go uh, tapping your right hip. Okay, right hip, left hip, and then, uh, what shoulder is this? Oh my God, my lefts and rights are really off today. Um, right shoulder, left shoulder. So we'll do all four quadrants. Opposite hip, same hip, Opposite shoulder, same shoulder. Opposite hip, same hip. Opposite shoulder, same shoulder. <laughs> okay, okay, keep going, keep going. Pause, switch directions with the figure eight. Find that first, and then add the add the taps. This is horrible. I, 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 Chad, you're you're not I, alone. I I <laughs> keep it. You're not alone. I promise. You're not alone. Okay, good. Okay, relax, shake that off, shake that off. Okay, let's just do a quick test. I'm gonna have you come back to one hand on top of the other hand. I'm just curious if anything changed here for you. And I just want you to same, find that same tap, 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 palm, knuckles, palm, knuckles, palm, knuckles. Okay. Yeah, and then switch hands, other hand lying on top, 
back and forth, back and forth as quick as you can. Okay, and relax. Okay, just out of curiosity, we didn't really do a lot, but I am curious. Can I get a thumbs up if the tapping got better? A sideways thumb if it stayed the same and a down thumb if it got worse. Wow, wow. <gasps> Okay. Yeah. 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 A little bit. Yeah. Great. Wow. That's mainly thumbs up. That's really good. Awesome. Okay, cool. I, I was just curious. See, when we work the brain, our coordination can get better <laughs> and our speed, our speed of movement gets better. All right, cool. Okay. Let's come back to a seated or standing grounding position. We'll bring hands up reaching up towards the sky and just finding a little circle, drawing your hands on the sky. So just kind of circling the ribs and the hips around. And then switch direction. Good, and then we'll come back to the center. Find one last roll down. Take an inhale at the bottom. And then exhale, roll yourself up. And then hands come all the way down. Good. Okay, we'll close the eyes. And then just coming into those axes again. So noticing your center axes from your sit bones up your spine, up and out through the top of your head. Noticing the left side versus the right side and that, that plane of axes there. And then noticing the plane forward to back And noticing how the front of the body feels comparatively to the back of the body. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. We'll take one more inhale. One more exhale. And we'll open the eyes. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining everyone. As always, it's good to see you all. Uh, no new announcements. Oh, let me just pause this recording.